Good everyone. So two weeks on as promised. I'm gonna, just going to go through the rest of the Haltech wiring, um, which is pretty much done now, just waiting on the engine. And also going to explain how and why McFry is now unregistered um, in this video. Okay, so let's start off with the whole registration thing. Um, so what happened is the RMS had a big crackdown on illegally modified cars and um, pretty much they've made, they've been using social media or um, just attending events, that sort of thing, writing down number plates um, and if your car's been lowered or whatever, modified, something like that, they can legally send or make you take your car to an inspection station like the pits or something like that. Even if your car is modified at an event, so it's not actually driven on the road while it's been modified, um, they can make you do this, which is really shit. So, um, so they had a photo of McFry doing a power skid with a big blower out the bonnet. So, and they pretty much said that I need to take the car out of the pits and yeah, so it's pretty crap. So I've just had to take the car off the road and like I, I could get it back. I could get this car registered legally um, with a lot of work, but um, I'm just not that keen to go through that process, the engineering process, because there's, there's so many rules and um, regulations that they've made. You have to jump through like all the hoops just to try and get a modified car registered is actually really hard to do like so when you find a car that's like heavily modified and engineered um you know they've jumped through a lot of hoops to do that so um so that sucks with a car so um i've just had to take it off the road um the only reason i was kind of keeping it registered anyways is i want to do a drag challenge event so just when the time comes uh where i want to maybe do a drag challenge event in the car I'm then going to have to start jumping through some hoops. But for now, the car spends all of its life in the shed broken anyway. So, and I only used to drive on the road like, you know, twice a year. So it's going to save me 1400 and something dollars a year not having it registered. So um, at the moment, it doesn't really worry me. But just uh, uh, in future, for everybody that takes their car to an event or even a car meet, something like that, um, just keep in mind that. If, if they want to, like either the RMS or the police, if they want to audit your car, they can legally do it with the powers that they have. So they can literally, you know, say if your car's on historic red Joe and you've got some mag wheels on your car, same sort of scenario. They can, you know, make you jump through hoops and that sort of thing. And it's the, the shit part about it is, is like when your car's at an event, you can't illegally modify it while you have the registration plates on it. So that part is pretty crummy. I didn't ever knew that was a thing until now. So um, if your car is registered, just put fake plates on it or take number plates off when you attend events. So that's really the only way around it because um, Australian rules suck. So <laughs> there's nothing else to it. Um, so McFry is a full-time trailer queen now and it's because of our shit rules we have in Australia. So that's just the way it is. And um, yeah, that sucks. So I'm going to go through the wiring now. Um, enough gibberish about the whole registration thing. Um, I'm going to go through and show you guys how far I got with the Haltech Nexus and show you all the cool functions and stuff it has. Have a look, see. Ah! I'm going to zoom out. So, as you can see, I've got the whole dash in. Uh, it's a HZ GDS dash. And all I've done is I'm going to have to bring this out to turn my um, torch on. Here we are. So, as you can see, I've made an extremely basic metal bracket to hold that dash on there. I've had to space the steering column down. Um, of two washers just to the screen is hard up against it but just because it's going to try and push the screen up through the dash so i had to put some washers on the column to bring it down a little bit um 
the overall it's just a really nice HZGDS dash and I've just put some rare spares lenses in it and I made up this plate uh, on the laser and this cool Homer Simpson button says let's go so what I'm going to do We're going to turn this on. That noise there is the brake pump. So we're going to take a little look see under here. That's my kill switch. Um, there's a lot going on under here. Millions of wires. And right here we have... This is the keypad. So this is a, a CAN operated keypad that Haltech sell that has, this is the 15 button one. Um, so basically, I haven't actually set any of these up yet, but I've just basically set up all the stuff that I'm possibly going to use. I put the turtle there because I didn't have anything for that. Um, the only one that they didn't have was one for the oil accumulator, but I might just do something in the Haltech for that to come on when the oil pressure is low. Up here, this dial here is probably the most important sort of dial. So I'm tuning, I'm going to have this car tune. I'm getting Dale Helly to tune it. Um, he's going to do an alcohol tune, E85, and then for race fuel. So, and the whole sending, no prep racing. Um, what's going to happen here is this is sort of going to change between the alcohol setting. It's probably just going to change like the timing, um, maybe a few little things, nothing too much. Ideally, when I go to no prep, I'd like to possibly um, disable the trans brake and make it a nitrous button instead. It's probably the only thing I'd like to do there, and then it'll just be timing for the rest. Maybe a rev limiter too, like for sending rather than have the rev, lim rev limiter on 8,000 everywhere, um, maybe put it down a bit lower, like 7,500 or something, and just rev the crap out of it for the racing only. Um, E85, same scenario, it's just going to have a different map when you flick the switch. And pump cruising, this is literally just for 98 fuel, because I just want to put 98 fuel in the motor to drive it on the road, which I can't drive on the road now anyway, but that was the whole idea. Um, and racing, it's going to be for like a race gas, um, like a VP sort of nitrous fuel, that sort of thing, and um, a decent nitrous tune. So it'll actually go do a decent number down the drag strip. I haven't set much up on the screen, so but I just want to show you guys that it's all pretty cool. That's the that's pretty much where I got all the interior at. Ah. So, I'm very happy how all that turned out. I'm going to have to do something with the center console to make the shifter a little bit neater. And the back is still the same. I've just wired up the, the fuel pump. I have a big monster um, fuel filter. So, I'm going to have a full 12 and line running from here, it's going to go into that fuel filter and run down to the front. Okay, so up the front here, I ended up mounting my um, two map sensors here. So one of those map sensors is going to be for the, the intake uh, vacuum and the other one's going to be for the crankcase vacuum. So the big block has a vacuum pump on it. So that's just going to read the, the vacuum in the crankcase. Um, the only thing I did with the power steering was I just installed a power steering filter. It's just like a, I can't remember the brand, McKay I think it was, but it's just a, a filter to get out um, in any, I don't know, crap or whatever in the power steering fluid. It's going to filter it out. It's got a magnet in it as well, so I just sort of chuck it on there. And battery mounted over here, and I've cleaned out my clear view. When you filter on it, the oil cooler I've mounted 
right there with the trans cooler on it and I've mounted the fan which I think was a 11 inch spell fan a pusher one so it literally just sits right there so the two transmission lines are going to go that way you know up around the inner guard into the box and the oil cooler I'm going to have that line you can see down there and had to cut a bit out of the chassis here I'm just going to have a hose going, a little loopy dip there, going straight into that. And made a hole here. So the top hose is going to go through there and run to the motor. So oil is going to go through the filter first, and then it's going to go through the oil cooler and then through the motor. And also the brake, when I did the... Um, I've just got a little electric pump down here that turns on and off. It's also got one of these little map sensors. So it turns itself on and off. Um, when the boost, like when the vacuum gets to a set level, it um, turns itself on and off. So, so those little uh, brake vacuum pumps, it's a, I think it's like a Commodore sort of one, like a VE Commodore, I think. I can't remember, but they're like a small one. They're cheap. You get them on eBay. They draw around eight amps total. So, but it turns itself on and off. And that's the two engine plugs I ended up with. So that lower one here, this one here, that's 31 pins. That's all for the EFI. So the injectors and the idle, idle control are all on that one plug. The other plug has all the sensors for the motor and that's I think 24 pin. So there's a lot of wires going on there. And I have to finish that, the rest of the wiring off. Once the motor's in, I can do them two harnesses, so they're just going to be easy plug-in. And, yeah, I'll lift this up. And I'll take a look underneath. All right, so underneath, um, I've got a nice new dipstick in there from the braided one I used to have. And wipe the gearbox up with temperature, and that's a pressure sensor up there the main pressure of the gearbox. I've also installed the two wide bands in the pipes and they've just got the correct amount of sticky outy in the pipe for them to work good. Um, cutouts I didn't wire up because I'm planning on getting rid of them. My rust hole in my muffler box and that one pretty cool. So I'm planning on getting rid of them muffler boxes. I'm just going to run a straight pipe. And I just want to have these rear mufflers only. I'm just going to have it loud as hell all the time now since it's unregistered. And um, um, I reckon two weeks. I think hopefully I'll have the motor back for this. So um, when I get that back, I'll do the wiring for it, get the motor in. Hopefully I'm not missing a heap of things and I can just get this thing up and running and um, organise to get on the dyno, get a tune and make Queensland power crews, hopefully. Um, so that's the plan. Um, I still haven't got the gearbox back for the ute yet, unfortunately, um, but there has been two big race meets um, at the dragway, which I imagine a lot of people have been breaking gearboxes, so you can just imagine... Um, <laughs> Those race slides are going to be flat out. Um, but, yeah, hopefully soon I'll um, get the gearbox back, get the ute up and running. Um, but for now, I really want to try and get this thing up and running because this thing is kind of affordable to drive. That ute is so expensive. Um, yeah, so that's all. And I'll um, about two weeks. I might have another video for you guys. But for now, that's all I've got. So thanks for watching. And... Um, t-shirts, t-shirts, and buy them t-shirts. They're on my website, so I'll put a link up this corner. So, thanks for watching.